Today on Toy Habits, we are doing a deep dive on the G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Infantry figure, but back in my day, they were just called Cobra and Cobra Officer, but whatever, Hasbro. Toy Habits. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits, and today we are taking a body part by body part look at the grunts of the Cobra Army, the Cobra Infantry Trooper. And since I couldn't decide which vintage figure to choose from, we will be doing a comparison with both of his vintage figures from 1982, the Straight Arm Cobra and Cobra Officer figures. Let's first start off by looking at the box and the Cobra Infantry Trooper comes in the window display box that shows off all of his wonderful accessories. And let me tell you, this soldier is strapped. And with respect to the art on the box, this is one of the better art designs that I've ever seen on any of the packages that I've reviewed so far. And what you see here is a Cobra soldier standing at attention, and I love that they have the Cobra symbol here. They also drew another Cobra symbol on his wrist, which I think is a fantastic addition. Uh, you can also see some Cobra infantry behind them, and what looks to be a hiss tank over his head, which gives me great anticipation that we will be getting a G.I. Joe classified series vehicle his tank in the line. That would just be fantastic. And I love the way that they kind of wrap around some of the art that you'll see on the side of the box. So what you'll see is more Cobra Troopers up front in a fantastic fire display with embers and just a hail of firestorm that they're running through. And what I think is the best part of this box is the front face of the soldier that you can see dead on. I love the way that they drew the mask. It has a ton of, looks like mechanical detail, and you would just imagine that this mask is something that these Cobra Troopers are breathing through as they're going through battle. I also really love the way that the helmet is drawn, as well as the Cobra symbol that appears behind him. You don't see the full Cobra symbol, but you know it's a cobra symbol. And again, we have more wraparound elements here. We have the soldier holding his gun, and that does wrap around a little bit to the front here. You can kind of see the, the gun bleeding into the front of the picture here. So I think just very, very well-drawn art, and it just represents this iconic figure very, very nicely. Looking at the side of the box, let's get into his role and what the Cobra Infantry does best. He is a level one across the board at being a foot soldier, a wielder of light weaponry, fist bumping, oh wait, that's hand-to-hand -hand combat, and finally, sabotage. Like all the G.I. Joe classified figures I've reviewed, let's first take a look at the figure body part by body part. So first, let's start off with the head sculpt with the helmet on. Now, this is typically the way that you're going to see a Cobra Trooper displayed, and I think the way that they designed the helmet was really, really smart. They gave the helmet a lot of definition with these lines here, and even differentiated some of the toning and coloring with giving it some two-tone color with a dark blue and a light blue, and also just the lines that they've drawn on these helmets just give it a lot more definition and really, really make the helmet pop. I've always wondered what was on the inside of these helmets, and underneath the helmet we find a lot of textures running diagonal, horizontally, vertically. I mean, the way that they've done this head sculpt is pure genius. It gives the head a much needed definition, and you can imagine that this particular mask can come off at some point and let the Cobra Trooper breathe, and the way that they designed the mask is also fantastic. Uh, it actually looks like a cat or a lion face with the way that they've sculpted the bottom here, which looks like a little frowny face. There's little nose holes. And the way that they've drawn some of the detail in the sculpting on the side kind of looks like whiskers. But altogether, this looks like a fantastic mask with a lot of texture. And you needed that texture because it's a black piece and you needed a way to differentiate all of the little parts and pieces that might be going into this mask, into this head sculpt for his helmet to cover it. You could also imagine that the mask is a breathing apparatus as well, kind of like Darth Vader, but something that can assist the Cobra Trooper with 
running through fire or running through smoke where he can filter out all of the bad elements and you know retain all of the wonderful oxygen to breathe as they are going into battle. And taking a look at the chest armor, really the only way to describe this chest armor is layers and texture. There are layers upon layers of pouches and detail and sculpting and straps and colors. They have really packed so much detail into this vest. You really have to stare at this thing for hours to really see all of the little intricacies that you might miss. For example, a lot of the strap detail here that they've sculpted on here. There's also uh, some horizontal texture running here with some vertical lines just to differentiate the vest from the chest armor. We have pouches that can carry the weapons and accessories that we'll get to in a little bit. And I haven't even got to the back yet. So if we turn this figure around, you can see that the straps run down to, you know, to his mid back. And there is a back plate, which looks like it can house a port for a gun that he can strap to his back. There's also, I don't know if this is a defect in my figure, but it looks like there is some uh, battle damage here. Hopefully that's not a defect, but I'm just going to go with battle damage and that was that was meant to be. There's also a pouch for his gun back here, which also has a lot of detail as well. There's also riveting detail on the straps back here. We have some more straps that are running down the, the back right there. There's also pouches on the sides that mirror each other on the right and the left. And you can also see some riveting detail on the buckles in the front. And this armor that they've put on this figure is just so great. And it just makes the Cobra soldier look like a menacing force with all of this armor strapped to him. And he's gonna look even better when you attach all of the accessories that he comes with. And taking a closer look at the arms, they use a lot of texturing and a lot of angles to represent the forearm armor. I love that the way that this is drawn and angled and just with the little cutouts that really form under his forearm. And you can even see the strap detail that they've put on this figure to signify that this is not actually attached to his arm. It's actually a uh, removable piece that he might want to take on and off. Looking at the upper arm detail and the shoulder, they really have a great use of texture here and sculpting to just provide a lot of definition to the arms. And it, it even spans to the inside of the arm too. There's some texture here. Uh, there's also some texture here and some texture on his shoulder and that is mirrored on the other side as well. So I just think they did a fabulous job just paying a lot of attention to detail in what could have been a very boring arm design. You have a solid blue figure, but again, the use of texture and color really differentiates the parts and gives definition to the arms, which is a great addition to the figure. And finally, let's take a look at all of the Cobra symbols that are adorned on this armor. And of course, we have the classic red cobra symbol on his chest and if you don't pay attention and look don't look super closely you might miss all the cobra symbols for example there are cobra symbols on the wrists there is a cobra symbol on the gun holster and if you turn the figure around there is also a cobra symbol on the back strap close to his neck and i'm sure i've missed a cobra symbol here but uh, that's all i can see for now Looking at the pant detail, they did a fantastic job with the colors and the textures to give the pants a lot of definition. There is a lot to look at here as well. For example, we have horizontal lines running this way. There's also waffle print texture on the thighs, as well as differentiating darker blues from lighter blues, as well as vertical lines uh, running across his upper leg into his crotch area. And I'm just really impressed with the way that they've done the pants. There's a lot of wrinkle detail, which makes it look like he's actually wearing the pants. And the way that they've painted the knee pads and provided the sculpting detail here, it just gives 
a ton of definition to these knee pads and it kind of mirrors the face mask that we've seen with these uh, horizontal lines here. I love that the blues and the grays are on these knee pads because it just makes the knee pads pop and just makes them look a lot more interesting. I love the seams that are running down the pants and if we look at the back there's a lot of wrinkle detail and you know you can imagine the wrinkle detail uh, becoming very extreme when you tuck the pants into the boots. All right, looking at the shin armor in the boots, we can see that the shin armor is flared out kind of like a cobra symbol here. You know, it kind of starts really small and kind of flares out and there's a lot of angular definition in the, in the shin armor and it kind of bleeds right into the boot. I love the differentiation of color that they've used here. There's blue, if you can see it on the top of the boot, uh, which kind of makes it look like it's a kind of a one piece shin armor. And they also put some sculpting detail here, which hopefully again is not a defect in mine, but uh, I guess it's present on, on both shoes. So we're gonna go with the fact that they've provided some detail here that signifies that this trooper has been in battle and his shoes are not in the greatest shape because he's running through fire, he's running through rocks, he's running through a hail of bullets, and the shoes are just a representation of the things that these Cobra Troopers go through on a daily basis. They're not going to have clean shoes. The sculpting detail here on the back of the boot is fantastic and you can kind of see the distressing here and it kind of looks like his foot is actually in the boot the way that they've carved and sculpted the boots this way. Now these Cobra Troopers come with a lot of accessories so let's first take a look at the knife. Now if you are not paying attention to the detail here you are going to miss the best part of this knife. They've actually sculpted a snake mouth that is looks like it's eating the blade and I just think this is a fantastic design and something that just really surprised me. I was expecting just a really boring straight edge knife, but looking closer at the detail, I mean, they really went above and beyond in this really, really tiny piece. It looks the same at the end. If you look at the handle detail here, you have space for the fingers to grab onto. There's definition in the blade and also there are some serrated edges in the blade here. I just think they did a fantastic job with this knife in general. Now, looking at the guns, he comes with two smaller guns, uh, two smaller pistols, and the detail in here is also amazing. With the way that the stock looks, there's a lot of mechanisms on this gun, and it looks the same on the other side, but there's just a lot of small parts, small sculpting detail that just makes a very tiny pistol really pop. And finally, let's get to the big kahuna, his rifle. And again, the uh, gun stock and just the way that this piece is sculpted just makes it look super, super interesting. Uh, the way that they have horizontal and vertical lines running through the pieces, as well as just the way that the rifle is sculpted. Um, it has a blunt barrel, which is interesting because it looks like this could possibly be like a plasma phaser. On the back here, there is a very long port, which kind of puzzled me, but it looks like the Cobra Trooper has a port that can this can plug into the back. So not a super big fan of this particular design. I wish that they had left off this port because it looks kind of weird, but we'll go with it. Um, you know, maybe he'll just have the gun strapped to his back all the time. And here we have the Cobra Trooper all geared up with all of the guns and all of the knives in the right place. And I left him holding his gun just for display purposes here. And I think what you can do with this port uh, on this gun is actually have him uh, pretend to hold on uh, to the to the gun here. So maybe that's maybe that's a reason why they left that really really long port there. And the figure is articulated enough where you can kind of have him reach around for him to grab his pistol in the back, which I think is a very cool feature. So he can do a double gun fist and come in guns a I actually really want to display him with the knife because I think the knife just looks really, really cool and I don't want to hide the snake detail in the pouch. And here is a look at just the way that the 
gun port plugs into the back here so you can conceivably just have his gun strapped to his back there which actually looks kind of cool i might just put it in an angle just to make it look more interesting but there's a lot of displayability with the accessories and weapons on this figure which makes it look really really awesome now i couldn't decide which vintage figure to compare to the gi joe classified figure so i just included both vintage figures i have two straight arm figures one's a cobra officer and one is just the regular cobra figure and looking at the similarities between the figures they did a great job incorporating really both aspects of these two vintage figures into this one design for example they did a great combination of the pouches and just things on the front of the chest that they incorporated in the classified figure as well as some of the colors although they're different shades they're kind of a nod to the vintage figure the way that there are grays uh, represented in the gi joe classified figure also the way the helmets are designed and the way that you can see the faces it's a little bit different they've covered up the face of the gi joe classified figure here but on the vintage figure the eyes and the facial area is more exposed to the elements and I actually really like the design of the classified look as I love the look of the eyes that are just kind of staring out of the mask and the helmet. Another similarity is just the cobra symbols in the middle of the chest. They chose to go with red instead of a silver color, which I think they actually should have gone with a silver color here because I think it would just pop a lot better and it would really differentiate it from the Cobra Island version that is also in the line. You can also see some of the sculpting detail on this helmet here. It's kind of like a chevron shaped, and I think they tried to mimic that shape in the classified figure helmet as well. Now I've swapped places with two of the vintage figures just to show you the similarities and differences between the classified figure and the vintage figure with the red symbol on it, and obviously the knee pad design is very similar to both figures and I actually wish they would have replicated some of the silver detailing here that you'll find on the shoulder but I think the way that they did the texturing on the arms and the way that they've drawn the arms actually makes up for the lack of detail and sculpt that they left out from the vintage figure design. This figure looks amazing from all angles and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite figures in the line with its myriad of ways that you can play around with the accessories to give him many different looks to all of the sculpting and texturing details they've added to this figure. Let us know your favorite aspect of this figure in the comments below and on your way out to check out more reviews, hit that subscribe button and thanks as always for tuning into Toy Habits.